for improved system performance, long-term financial returns, and less risk on your PV projects. Look to the proven performance of DuPont Materials and Solutions. Hello and welcome to another edition of PV Newscast. Coming up, more companies fall victim to the solar shakeout, including a big scalp, Q-cells. Germany has a new feed-in tariff. And a new report forecasts module shipment growth. Bankruptcy concerns have been confirmed as Q-Cells cancels bondholder restructuring plans and files for insolvency. Management efforts at Q-Cells to restructure bondholder payments to boost liquidity have been derailed due to a ruling of the Frankfurt Higher Regional Court of final appeal on a case not directly related to the struggling PV manufacturer. The ruling means all bondholders must accept changes to payments rather than a majority, which Q-Cells had received. A few Q-Cells bondholders had been reported to have opposed the PV manufacturer's offer. The news comes only a week after Q-Cells reported full-year results and had indicated that it had made significant progress with support of the majority of bondholders. The company is now hoping it can restructure its finances under administration. The ongoing solar shakeout has captured another victim, this time SIG's thin film specialist from Germany, Odesan. The company had reported it had received few commercial orders and cash reserves had been depleted and they'd been seeking potential buyers. 260 jobs are now at stake. In more bankruptcy news, Solar Millennium's US subsidiaries also file for Chapter 11 administration as a consequence of Solar Hybrid also recently filing for bankruptcy. Solar Hybrid had previously acquired the PV project pipeline of Solar Millennium's US operations. In a twist, the Solar Millennium Saga, its former CEO Utz Klaassen has filed a 265 million US dollar suit against the firm on defamatory grounds. And as has been the case with this solar shakeout, news has surfaced of an apparent rescue for some of Schutten Solar's operations, having announced it was in financial difficulties late in February. According to an appointed Dutch law firm, Sunway Technology Investment Company has acquired the commercial activities of Schutten Solar, primarily the international sales offices and its PV projects business operations, for an undisclosed sum. The law firm said that 32 jobs had been secured with the purchase. With respect to its other operations, which include its module manufacturing, negotiations regarding a takeover were ongoing with an unidentified potential buyer. MPD SolarBuzz's latest quarterly report has found that PV manufacturers are likely to increase their shipments this year due to strong early year PV market demand and a changing policy environment in Europe. The report notes that end market revenues in the fourth quarter of last year were 354 billion US dollars, the highest level since Q4 of 2010. However, revenues are expected to drop to 22 billion US dollars in the fourth quarter of this year. The report goes on to speculate that Chinese, Taiwanese and rest of the world manufacturers grew their production shares to 78% in the fourth quarter of last year and are expected to increase share, albeit moderately, to 79% by year end. Sol Focus and Grupo Musa have announced the construction of a CPV plant with a total capacity of 450 megawatts in Baja, California. Construction is expected to begin in late 2012, and the project will be built in 50 megawatt tranches. Commercial production is estimated to commence in late 2013. Solmex Energy, a company founded by Grupo Musa and Synergy Technologies, owns and operates the solar power plant, while Solfocus will provide the CPV technology. Germany has a new feed-in tariff mechanism which came into effect on April the 1st. This legislation, born from a compromise between the ruling Christian Democratic Party and the Liberal Party, ends fit eligibility for PV plants over 10 megawatt. A grace period has been set up for developers to complete large PV plants. 
The government has also stated that only 80% of the electricity produced by rooftop PV plants below 10 kilowatts will qualify for fit payments, and only 90% of the electricity produced by plants of 10 kilowatts to 1 megawatt will qualify. Predictions of a monthly digression in the tariff were proved correct and have been set depending upon the amount of PV installed. Full details are, of course, on the PV Tech website. And finally, at last week's Semi-PV Fab Managers Forum, which attracted nearly 200 attendees, the third annual edition of the International Technology Roadmap for PV was revealed. The latest roadmap emphasizes new cost of ownership drives, thinner wafers and quasi-mono wafer inclusion, amongst other key amendments. The semi-European PV Group management also honoured the activities of Marcus Fischer, head of R&D at QCells, and Axel Metz, who heads research at Shot Solar for their exceptional work in chairing the road mapping effort. And it's the first of any award given by the group, so congratulations to both of them. That's all for this instalment of PV Newscast. See you again soon.